Hello and welcome back. Uh, Brian from Robotacy here again. And uh, continuing on, I'm going to show you how to hook up a um, receiver, transmitter receiver, to something like, for example, a uh, TNC 3.0, this one, or 3.1, hooked up to a Robotacy motherboard and sitting on a, a Robotacy mouse. I also have, uh, which I'll show you at the end, uh, the same sort of thing hooked up to a uh, Pro Mini. Uh, so the code is almost identical and I'll be able to change it over at the very end. So first off, the hookup. Um, you can see, let me zoom in here a little bit, move it over. Um, oops, wrong way. Come on, there we go. I've uh, hooked up the transmitter, uh, I'm sorry, the receiver and I've got the pins hooked up from channel one to channel six, all hooked up in a row, and they're plugged in to the TNC uh, on the uh, Robotacy motherboard from pins seven through pins 12. So pin seven is hooked up to channel one, pin 12 is hooked up to channel six. And then I'm running a power supply. This, uh, this side of the board has got a five volt uh, regulated power supply. I'm running that in to power the receiver itself. So I'll zoom back out. So that's all you have to do to hook it up. Just basically take the six uh, channels here and plug them right into the, into the Arduino or the Teensy or the Pro Mini, uh, anything that works fine for you. And I'm going to be doing is I'll be uh, using these two servo wheels to indicate that it's uh, working as well as controlling this uh, tricolor LED. So let's look at some code. And I'll post this uh, on the website. Um, first thing, just to make it easy, I'm going to go ahead and use the standard servo library. Okay, so I've included that. I have to create some variables. Uh, I have six channels, so I'm just going to logically label them channels one through channel six. Um, I do have this tricolor LED that we're going to be using to see whether or not it's working or not. And I have those hooked up to uh, pins four, five, and six uh, and labeled them LED one, two, and three. Um, I have the two servo objects I've created, the left servo and the right servo. In the setup, Pins, as I said down uh, originally, pins 7 through 12 are going to be hooked up to the receiver. So I've set pin 7 through 12 as input, connected to pins 1 through 6. Uh, in this particular case, I've attached my servos to, I can move this over a little bit so you can actually see it. My pin uh, are 0 and 1, so my two servos are connected here to pin 0 and 1. And I've also then set these pins where the LED, the tricolor LED right here, is all going to be output, okay? I, should, I didn't make that very clear. Pins seven through 12, I've set as input, because I'm gonna be taking that signal in from the receiver. And pins uh, four, five, and six, which are connected to the tricolor LED, are all gonna be output, okay? Let's skip this subroutine for the moment. This is the one that's going to be used when it's running autonomously. And we'll also skip this subroutine here, which is when it's going to be, we'll come back to it, when it's going to be running on RC control. And this one we're going to get to in a moment. Let's go down right to the main loop, okay? Uh, all we have to do is gather the uh, data in. So we're going to pulse in, pins 7 through 12 looking for a high signal gonna time out at a certain point I don't want it to dwell so I'm just gonna set this at 2100 and it's gonna take those in it's gonna store them into the variables channels 1 through channel 6 which of course you saw I created way up there at the beginning okay and I have channel 5 which if you saw my last tutorial I wanted to hook up this switch as determining whether or not the robot is going to be autonomous or not. So I'm going to use channel 5. If the value is greater than 1800, in other words the knob is spun and the, flip is, the switch is flipped, it's going to either 
drive the uh, robot directly with RC control, in which case you don't even need a microprocessor, but it's just going to handshake it and pass it on, or it's going to make it autonomous. Okay. The last thing that I have, and in fact, we're actually going to do this first. We're going to rem this out. And we're going to pull this back. Okay. Because what we want to do first is we want to see the values coming in. And to do that, I've created this print RC command. And let's go up to that routine. It's fairly straightforward. Where is it? There it is. All it's going to do is give us the data in a nice uh, column so we can see the values of channel 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down. Okay, And I have a line, uh, new line command here so we get easy to read and a one second delay so we actually have time to read it. So let's load it up. Okay. And in theory, if I turn this on, open up my dialog window. Okay, I'll move this out of the way so you can actually see. Here's my comms, they're coming in. Uh, let's look at channels one and two, which are going to be this stick here. And you're going to see the values here. Uh, if I move channel two, see I jumped up to 1800, go down like this goes down to about 1100 go over here channel 1 it goes to a thousand over here channel 1 goes to 1900 by no surprise the same sort of things happen down here with channels 3 you saw it drop down to a thousand you can see that oops hold on a second that one sorry about that jumps back up and we can see my control value dropping down to 1500 and 2000. Okay, so it all works great. So now let's actually make this thing move. So let's say, let me go ahead and rim this out and bring this back. Okay, if we're going to drive RC then we're going to jump up to this routine and what I've done here is I've created a uh, a statement that says you know what if the stick is kind of close to the center let's output a 1.5 millisecond or 1500 microsecond which on these servos is not moving okay so I give myself a, a window here if the stick is a little bit in the middle it's not going to move I do it down here for the other channel too. Oops, by the way, I'm going to use channels. I'm going to use this channel. No, oh, you can't see it. Sorry. I'm going to use this channel for this demo and this channel to control the servos. Okay. And that's channel one and channel four. Same thing here. If channel four is kind of close to the middle, well, let's just set it to 1500. If it goes over, a value less than 1450 or greater than 1550 then we're just going to put the data from the actual uh, receiver directly into the servo same thing with channel 4 okay and let's look what else happens if the switch is flipped in the other direction it goes to autonomous all right in which case here what we're going to see is we're going to see that my lights flash. You can see LED 1, LED 2, LED 3. This is going to be a loop. It's going to cause the three LEDs to go in a sequence at 100 uh, millisecond delays. So it'll flash rather quickly. And then just to make sure that it's actually uh, really working, I've thrown in just a couple of randomly chosen at 1800 and 1200. We should watch those servos bounce back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so if it works, I'm going to load it up. Let's get that out of the way. Let's turn on, oh, transmitter's already on. Okay, and so you can see I have variable control, dead stop, kind of in the middle there, other direction. Same with this stick. 
So I could drive this robot right in the field, you know, in any way that I want to, steer it left and right. And as soon as I get close to where I want it to be, I flip the switch. And now it's on autonomous behavior. And I can have it running sensors or whatever else. And the, and the Arduino is going to do its, its job. And then as soon as I need to regain control and drive it out of an arena or whatever it is I'm going to be doing, I flip the switch. And I'm back to uh, RC control. So, like I said, I wanted to show you quickly that this also works on the Pro Mini. So, let me do that to turn this off. Pull this aside. Unplug that. Here's a Pro Mini. Okay. And let me pull this transmitter off. I'm sorry, the receiver off. And I'm going to need my glasses for this. I have using the same exact pin numbers to make it easy for us. You can see here I have chosen pin 7 through 9 on this side and pins uh, 10, 11, and 12. So it's the exact same pins. We don't hardly have to change the code at all. And we're going to plug this in. We're going to start with pin 7 down here. So that goes to channel 1. And then we want to have it go like this. So this should be a direct swap, just like that. Okay, so I've got six through 12 hooked up, responding to channels one through six. And I have to plug in my power supply. So we get my five volts going into it, like so. Okay, we are hooked up. And then I need my Pro Mini controller which should be here. There it is. I'll tell you what else I have to do. I did make a couple of minor changes. Let me get that out of there. And let me find the Pro Mini on mouse code, which is this one. And I'll explain the differences. They're very, very slight. Um, well, let's see. Pull that down a little bit further. There we go. So here's my Pro Mini on mouse code. What did I change? I think the only thing I really changed is because this mouse uses a Fataba servo, its center is not exactly 1500. It took a little bit of play. I found the center on this particular servo pair to be 1390 and 1400. So that'll give it a complete stop or very close to stop. Um, everything else is the same. LEDs are all hooked to the same pins. Uh, the transmitter receiver action is all hooked to the exact same pins. Um, I don't think there's going to be any other changes. I still use channel 5, so hopefully it's going to work just great. I'm going to plug this in like so. Uh, I do have to, this is obviously very important. We now are going to be using a Pro Mini. And we are now going to be connected to COM port 4, like so. I'm going to load it up. And as soon as it's done, there we go. Turn that on. Turn on my power turn on my motors and let's see if we got action here I did hex up oh, well but trivial sorry I just realized I have these two flipped but that would be in other words this stick is now controlling the left servo and not the right servo and this one's controlling the right and not the left if you really want to get to changing that that is nothing more than changing these two numbers, where are they at? Right here. Okay. Oh, that was the other thing I did. Because you recall, I had my other servos hooked up on zero and one. Now they're hooked up on two and three. All right. And oh, let's watch it go into autonomous. All works great. Switch it back. And voila, we're back on RC control.